everyone. Thank you so much for joining to my new video here on my English learning platform. I hope you're all doing well. I haven't been active in a while. And the reason being is that I was, oops, sorry, that I was doing uh, another work. So I've been working as a recruiter for teachers as well, for English teachers. And that is an opportunity that came. And um, I was very happy to accept that. Um, it is something that um, is closely related to what I was doing, but now I was able to be on the other side and see what it's like to uh, actually aspire to become a teacher, what it takes and how can I help in a way to, to make them better and to uh, introduce them to this world of teaching and what they, what the students require of, of them. So it was an interesting experience and I had to make a break from teaching because I couldn't do that at the same time, but now I'm back. Um, so I just had my first group class uh, from students from South America. That was an amazing experience. I have to share that with you first, because for the first time, I was able to answer all of the questions from many students at the same time, and they were all related to improving their level, um, international communication, uh, accent learning. Um, there were so many interesting questions and I was so happy to answer. I hope I was able to answer all of them. I'm not sure, but um, that kind of gave me a new idea. So since I bought a new computer um, that gave me this opportunity to record uh, live uh, my screen, it would be nice to have these chats um, on my platform um, I would talk about many different things as usual, um, whatever comes up and whatever YouTube allows me to talk about. Uh, but it will also be nice in the future to have some of you join me and just have like an honest conversation and to talk more about, um, first of all, um, English learning is something that that I started teaching first, but then uh, it really goes into multicultural communication academic advising, media communication, I would have to say, because in today's world, uh, when, I, uh, when I was a student, I studied journalism. So dealing with media was a profession. So you had to study uh, to be, be a journalist, to be able to um, consume media in the correct way and produce media. Nowadays, which is like nine years, it, it's so, it's insane how fast everything changed. And uh, nowadays, when I look at my career, I think journalists are first and foremost um, researchers and observers. But nowadays, every everyone can be a producer. You have your phone. If you are in the middle of an event, if you need to share something, of course, you are going to record it and post it on social media. You will be a congratulations, you're a producer. <laughs> so um, this, this profession changed so much. And I think we are not prepared for what's coming. We're not prepared for um, this new world um, of media and this new world of, of commun communication when, where everything becomes so much closer. And at the same time, English is becoming this language that um, is connecting us all because through English, you can also learn new languages. If you have English and then you use English translation, for a certain language that you don't know, that is a tool for you to to learn a new language as well. So I caught myself on on different social media platforms, um, just reading texts in in different languages um, and translating them. So it it became really an eye opener. So six years or seven years years ago when I started teaching. Um, online English learning platforms were like a new thing <laughs> that was popular. But nowadays, I think that changed so much that um, it is now just a tool so that you can do something else with your skill and that you can um, basically produce your own content. Um, so I also have to mention, um, because as, a, as an online teacher and as a multicultural uh, communicator. I have students from many different countries and it happens that some of those countries are not doing very well right now. So I have to mention a student that I had maybe beginning of this year. Her name is Nita 
um, and she is from West Bank. I think the city is called Ramallah, if I'm correct. Um, she was my student. Um, and first of all, she's a, a young woman that is an accountant or a revisor, I think. Uh, she works for a company and very successful. Her English level is so good. Um, but we, after a while, we stopped communicating because she um, she reached her goal to to go to the U.S. to attend a conference, I think, or some work trip. And um, as soon as this all happened in Middle East, I, I immediately remembered her. Even though we never met in person, she was my student, and we talked about many different things, including uh, the position of of young educated women in in her country, and she she. Um, gave me so many insights into her world. Uh, and I am so grateful uh, as a teacher and also as a journalist to once more realize that, you know, you have to speak with, with people um, and not with media. Um, the only real communication and the only real information that you will get, you will get from people. And um, that is how you break stereotypes. That is how you become more human by listening and meeting pe real people and real stories. Uh, there is nothing, you know, nothing that you will learn from just scrolling, especially nowadays where everyone, like I said, can post anything. Um, and also speaking of that, um, I think we find our we found ourselves for the first time in this world where um, everything is happening right now. It's live, so you have a massive conflict, a crisis that's happening, and you are seeing that um, televised and advertised and shown to you right there. So you you have a real person who is speaking to you from a certain place, and you are in your bed. And you were just watching that live. Can you imagine like that happening like 30 or 40 or 50 years ago? This is something that we have now and it's very dangerous and it, it's a new thing. So we, we have to learn how to handle it. I think people who studied media or who are journalists, we have like a much more, um, we have a better sense, let's say, or we are more prepared to taking, to rationalizing that information and to realizing that, um, you know, what's right, not what's right and what's wrong, but maybe what's um, honest, what's not, or what's objective, what is not, what is more emotional, what is less emotional, what were, what is the ultimate goal of a certain video. I think younger people who are just taking over and who are having their first phones, they have no idea. And uh, they have to get, you know, it's just if you have a, a, a child at like 12 or 13 years old and they're scrolling through these videos and they're seeing like many different things, like how will they accept that information and how will they react to it? It's really a completely new territory. If you're working globally or for a multinational company or if you have like colleagues from around the world, you have to be prepared that, um, you know, that you will now see those colleagues as they they are, you know, as they are there with you, as they're uh, working with you. Because uh, even though we say that online communication is, you know, maybe um, not real as much as you know having somebody sit next to you, I think uh, the more we work online, it will be that barrier will be more invisible. Through following that story, I um, realized that um, things that are happening in the world are now much closer to you. And that also means that we as humans, as individuals who ultimately cannot do anything, or we thought that we could now that we see us connecting, uh, there is a greater chance in the future that um, people will have their say in a lot of these events because uh, as from what I realized, uh, there is this sentiment that, you know, we are out of control, that we don't know, um, we don't have control over um, certain institutions or even our governments, world, um, different world, world organizations, 
And um, the more we connect uh, and the, the more we see and understand each other, um, that is going to change. So you will see I'm, we're not as iso isolated as before. I also mentioned in one of the previous videos when um, that I will talk about uh, anxiety, I think, or my experience that I had with anxiety and depression. Um But when I had that problem or when I was struggling, um, I didn't have social media to help me or I didn't have, I was not connected in any way. And uh, now that is so much different. I see now a lot of videos that deal with that topic. And I feel like younger people are not as isolated as before. And uh, that is a big thing to know that you're not alone and that people from Indonesia and New Zealand and Peru and you know all over the world Russia UK they um they struggle with the same thing or they celebrate the same thing so I think uh, we're at, we are so much more connected and I also see through that uh, I see that through um languages as well I feel like people are more open to learn new languages more than before, you know, 200%. And uh, we consume content. We are now in love with some TV shows that are from Mexico or from, from Japan. And um, we want to, you know, before that would just stay on that level. Um, but now I think people are exploring and researching and they want to find out more. Um, they fall in love um, with people from different countries. And it's just uh, an amazing thing that we're seeing right now. I think in opposition, there are a lot of people who say that that is a bad thing because we should all preserve our national sentiment in terms of um, where we come from and what we bring to the world. I think that is also important. Um, you should definitely be proud or you should be free to decide if you want to be proud or not about where you come from. Uh, but I don't think that should define you necessarily. That is a place where you come from. That is your heritage. But that shouldn't limit you in a way to become a citizen of the world or to become this participant in, in a multicultural communication if you want to. So there are no limits anymore in that sense. And that is something that um, when I was studying, I couldn't even imagine that happening that um, I can communicate with people from different countries on the same level and that we are all interested in the same thing and that we have opinions about similar things. Um, that is like a completely new thing. It reminds me of this movie called Hair, where they say uh, that the age of Aquarius is coming. And I think now we're definitely in this age of Aquarius where young people are realizing that we are stronger together in a way. That is a, a positive message. Um, I will also make a, a video about uh, one of the saddest moments in my life so far that I have I um, that happened um, on past month on the thirty uh, 13th, sorry um, on October the thirteenth my uh, dog passed away so. I don't know what to say. I, I will have to make a different video about, or maybe have like a chat with some of you on, on this topic. Um, she, her name was Cherry, a full name, Ava Cherry Princess Snow White. And um, she was a Bernese mountain dog. Um, I got her as a gift in a time of my life where I, really needed someone um, to take care of and to take care of me. And uh, we started very well. At first, I was really scared because she's a big dog and I didn't know how to, will she accept me? How how should I train her? But uh, Bernie's Mountain Dogs are magical. They are, um, they, they, they say they have an intelligence of a seven, seven year old child. They can learn words. Uh, they follow you everywhere. They're your true companion. So uh, I was with her all this time. Uh, she was always with me. We never parted, I have to say. Um, and 
when she was one years old, she had an accident where her paw was damaged so, so she couldn't walk properly. And um, she was very scared. It was a hard moment because a person who hit her with a car, they ran and they left her like that. And so we had to struggle to take her to the vet. And she was very, very scared. And those months were, I had to work, um, but she was with me the whole time as well. So I think she saw me maybe as her savior or she saw my dedication. And all through her life, um, she sh was showing that. So we had a very, very special connection. It's hard for me to explain. You guys who have dogs, you will probably feel what I'm feeling or, or you will know uh, what kind of connection is it. So when I tell people, they say, okay, it's a dog, but um, it's not a, just a dog. <laughs> it's, um, it's, a, it's a very different connection. And so this this news that she was actually sick came very very late uh, we didn't see anything um she was just um she uh because she's a female dog so she had her period she was a little bit moody she didn't want to eat well or maybe she was not eating as mu much as before but this was all very normal like every year that happened and then one uh day she just stopped eating completely and we noticed some changes. So we uh, called the veterinarian and they were like, you have to bring her immediately because we think it's this um, illness that usually happens with older female adult uh, dogs. Um, and she actually had a uterus infection that spread. And so she was operated, but um, we all thought the operation went really well. She was recovering and then suddenly um her blood work was very very bad and uh, she died 13 days after the surgery and so those 13 days were extremely challenging i have to say um uh, you know i was there for her 100 percent um and i think she knew that but at the same time every day was ending up with you know doubts will she be okay is she breathing well? Did she ate enough? Um, so it was the first time where I felt, you know, this unconditional love that I have towards another being on this planet. And she actually passed away when I was not present uh, in the room, which kind of, I don't know, I think it's easier because I didn't see her last moments and I get to remember her as she was um and every day after it it is really difficult waking up and just knowing that somebody who always used to be there is not there anymore um it's hard but it definitely um opens up opens you up for better understanding of, of the world and the connections and so yeah, I don't want to go too much into detail about this, but uh, if you want, I will make another video about um, about dogs in general and specifically about Bernie's Mountain Dogs and why everyone should have one. <laughs> because now uh, everybody was asking me like, do you want to get another Bernie's Mountain Dog? And I'm like, there is no doubt in my mind that if I get another dog, it will be Bernie's Mountain Dog, but it it is not her. So I have to wait until I'm ready and uh, I cannot replace her. Um, so when it happens, it will happen. But um, I always encourage people to have dogs. It's it's one of the best connections that you will ever have in, in life. And especially now when people are isolated and lonely and living these different lives, I think having a, a dog companion, if you can, in your apartment or in a place where you live, it is the best idea. Sorry, my cat is coughing <laughs> over there. Um, okay, so that would be, this video is going to be too long, so I have to finish it here. Um, I just want to say that I'm back, and um, wherever you are in your English learning journey, you can always write me. Um, I wish you a fast improvement, and I, I hope to uh, inspire you with my new videos. So 
Um, happy Halloween, everyone. Happy fall season. And see you in the next video. Bye.